Hello, in today's video, we'll look at a monumental work. It is called Methods of Mathematical Physics by Courant and Hilbert. If you're a mathematics or physics student, Hilbert is a name that needs no introduction. Okay, now my cat walked away, let's continue. David Hilbert is a name that needs no introduction. The 23 problems he proposed at the turn of the 20th century set the direction of future mathematical research. Some may perhaps even say even to this day. And Richard Courant, is his student. They both originally worked in the University of Göttingen in Germany, but later Courant moved to the United States and founded the world-renowned Courant Institute of Mathematical Science in New York University. Courant Institute is one of the world's most prestigious research center in applied mathematics. So today we'll look at the content of the book, but at the same time use this book as a vehicle to discuss a piece of history of mathematics and perhaps also philosophy of mathematics. So let's take a look at the preface. First English edition translated and revised from the German original. So the preface is written by Courant. The first German edition of this volume was published um, by Springer in 1924. Um, and the second edition was published in 1930. Um, the second volume appeared in 1938. So this is only the first volume. The second volume is pretty much a standalone book. It is possible to read the two volumes separately. In the meantime, I had been forced to leave Germany and was fortunate and grateful to be given the opportunities open in the United States. During the Second World War, the German book became unavailable and later was even suppressed by the National Socialist ruler of Germany. Thus, the survival of the book was secured when the United States government seized the copyright and licensed a reprint. And this is what I mean by the greatest tragedy because at the turn of the 20th century, Germany as well as France had the highest concentration of world-class mathematicians. In the case of Germany, a lot of mathematicians are Jewish, including Courant himself. And that is why Courant, among many other famous German mathematicians at the time, were forced to leave Germany, which is of course a massive brain drain for Germany. Another famous German mathematician, for example, Emmy Neuter, uh, initially worked at Göttingen, was expelled by the Nazis. She later on also settled in the United States. She is considered the mother of modern abstract algebra, just extremely influential individual. So Courant and Amy Neuter were among the luckier ones, which certainly cannot be said for everybody. Fritz Neuter, who is Amy Neuter's brother, is another mathematician who worked in applied mathematics in the theoretical mechanics. Fritz Neuter was also forced to leave Germany, and he moved to the Soviet Union. But not long after, he was arrested by Stalin's secret police, and shortly after Germany's invasion of the USSR, he was executed. Another famous mathematician, Felix Hausdorff, who is one of the founders of topology, measure theory, and so on, he and his family were also under constant harassment by the Nazis. Unable to secure an academic position abroad, Hausdorff committed suicide, to avoid being sent to the concentration camp. Unsurprisingly, as a result of all of this, the German mathematics community was absolutely obliterated. So when the Nazi Minister of Education asked Hilbert that whether the Mathematics Institute at Göttingen has really suffered due to the departure of the Jews, Hilbert replied, suffered? It no longer exists, does it? In the preface, Koran also expressed his view on the relation between mathematics and other branches of science, with which I very much personally agree. Since the 17th century, physical intuition has served as a vital source for the mathematical problems and methods. Recent trends and fashions have, however, weakened the connection between mathematics and physics. Mathematicians, turning away from the root of mathematics in intuition, have concentrated on refinement and emphasized the postulational side of mathematics, and at times have overlooked the unity of their science with physics and other fields. In many cases, physicists have ceased to appreciate the attitude of mathematicians. This rift is unquestionably a serious threat to science as a whole. The broad stream of scientific development may split into smaller and smaller rivulets and dry out. It seems therefore important to direct our effort towards reuniting divergent trends by clarifying the common features and interconnections of many distinct and diverse scientific facts. 
Only thus can the student attain some mastery of the material and the basis be prepared for further organic development of research. This is, of course, still highly relevant to this day. Mathematics has grown into such a large and refined enterprise that one mathematician working in a particular field can have absolutely no idea what other fields are doing, let alone other branches of science such as physics and biology. And Koran continued, The present work is designed to serve this purpose for the field of mathematical physics. Mathematical methods originating in problems of physics are developed and the attempt is made to shape results into unified mathematical theories. Completeness is not attempted, but it is hoped that access to a rich and important field will be facilitated by the book. So just as stated in the preface, this book is not meant to be an encyclopedia. Many important aspects of mathematical physics, such as differential geometry and abstract algebra, are not covered here, because that is simply not the purpose of the book. And speaking of which, we shall look at the content. A couple of days earlier, I made a short about the mathematical prerequisites for studying quantum mechanics. And Corinth Hilbert Volume 1 can be seen as a much expanded and detailed exposition on the same topics. Chapter 1 is about the algebra of linear transformation and the quadratic form. So these are typically nowadays covered in the second course on linear algebra. And the focus here is eigenvalue problems. And in fact, this entire book, as we shall see, deals with eigenvalue problems in various different settings and from different perspectives. Um, and the first chapter deals with the linear algebraic aspect of eigenvalue problems. Series expansions of arbitrary functions, orthogonal system of functions. So in linear algebra, we solve eigenvalue problems in finite dimensional vector spaces. And here in chapter two, a close analogy takes place in an infinite dimensional setting. Orthogonal system of functions are not only indispensable for quantum mechanics. This is also the basis of studying many problems in classical physics as well, such as wave propagations and heat transfer. And here, as you can see, we have Fourier series, which is arguably the most important orthogonal system of functions. The Fourier integral, the Jean polynomials, Chebyshev polynomials, Jacobi polynomials. So these are all classical orthogonal polynomials. And here we have, the next chapter is about linear integral equations. The study of linear integral equations was a huge motivation for the development of modern functional analysis. And here, as you can see, we have eigenfunctions of a symmetric kernel. So the theme of eigenvalue problems continues in the setting of linear integral equations. The calculus of variations. So this in itself is once again a huge topic. You can think of calculus of variations as optimization problems in which the input is also a function. Many physical laws have their variational formulations. For example, Newton's law can be reformulated in terms of the principle of least action. Vibration and eigenvalue problems. You see eigenvalue problems once again. Vibrating rod, vibrating membrane, the vibrating plate. Going back to Koran's philosophy, these are the problems that gives rise to the original development of Fourier series. And as mathematics progressed, the field of Fourier series developed into harmonic analysis, which is much more abstract. Problems of sturm liouville type. So these are generalized Fourier expansions. The Schrodinger eigenvalue problem. If you study quantum mechanics, the Schrodinger eigenvalue problem, also known as the solution to the time-independent Schrodinger equations, gives us the energy levels of a quantum mechanical system. Applications of the calculus of variation to eigenvalue problems. And at the very end, we have special functions defined by eigenvalue problems. So the point of view of eigenvalue problems is taken to unify various special functions used in applied mathematics, which can often seen as a rather disconnected set of formulas. Just incredibly amazing stuff. So yeah, that's the end of today's video. Let me know if you enjoy this type of content, book review mixed with history of mathematics. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye.